to Sew What If I Sew, or welcome if you're new. Um, my name's Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related. And today I am bringing you some very, very exciting news. Like, oh my god, it's been so difficult not to tell everyone. But a while ago I announced on Instagram that I was a Singer Outlet ambassador, which meant I got a discount code for me and basically they uploaded some of my videos to the Singer website, which was really cool. However, things have escalated somewhat. Now you guys know I love Singer, um, and I'm not saying that just because we've now properly partnered with them, but both of my previous reviews have been fully independent, and I do love their machines. They are quite a big thing as well in my family. My grandma's first machine was a Singer, and my mum always recommends Singer as well. So it's a really good partnership for me, and I'm really excited, and you guys know I would never partner with anyone who I don't agree with, and I love a Singer machine, which brings me to this. This machine is on loan and uh, the managing director of the Sarah Outlet Group very kindly dropped me an email and went hello we'd love to hear your thoughts would you like to have it on loan for a bit to which the answer is absolutely. So let me tell you a little bit about this machine right here so I have tagged this video below as like a PR video because it basically is but lots of you do contact me asking for sewing machine recommendations so as per usual I will do a proper review of this machine after I've used it for a bit. Um, which I will endeavour to be as honest and even-handed as I am in my reviews. Usually I don't want to let any form of partnership change my voice on here because that's not what I'm about. However, onto the machine. So, a lot of you will have the standard mechanical Singer Heavy GT um, sewing machine. It's a good machine. It can get through pretty much anything. One of the reasons I didn't get it though is because I did want something at least semi-computerised. And that is where this machine comes in. So this is the Singer 7605C Heavy Duty Machine. And it is, da da, computerised. Fabulous. So it has got all the wonderful things the Heavy Duty had before, except now it's also got a start-stop button at the top sewing, which is really good for accessibility as well. Um, and it's got a computerised stitch selection panel. And it comes with a variety, I'm going to tip the box very very carefully so you guys can see and it also shows you on the top it comes with a variety of things um, including a walking foot and various other types of feet which I will use while I'm exploring this machine and tell you more about in the review video but I'm so so excited to use this I'm really excited as well that they've asked me to test this because I love testing a sewing machine plus it's been a year since I got my starlet pretty much exactly actually um, and it desperately needs a service because I've sewn with it almost every day <laughs> for a year and it yeah like any sewing machine after that time needs a service I would say personally I know there are people out there who've never had it serviced who get them serviced often but I think if you're using it constantly then it's worth it'll prolong the life of the machine so while my other one gets sent away I need to find somewhere to do that as well to service it for me um, I will have this lovely machine to get to grips with. Also, my Singer Overlocker is the heavy duty model as well, so I'll be interested to see how they compare. So I'm going to unbox this with you guys. Um, so I'll bring you over to the desk so you can see. Uh, the box is still fully sealed. It arrived half an hour ago and I'm so, so excited. Uh, so let's unbox this together. So here we are, here is the box. I've got my little Stanley knife to cut open the tape because I don't want to injure the box at all. It is, after all, on loan to me. So there we go. And then this little Stanley knife is really useful, actually. And I never bought it even for sewing. I actually bought it for work, or I use it. It's, it's from work a couple of works ago. So here we are, lovely. So since the last time quite interested actually to see what's different um since the last time i bought my sewing machine only a year ago so there's a nice little threading leaflet which is really really good uh, last time my old machine didn't have it this was integrated into the instructions and i think for beginners this is a lot better uh, this machine has a drop-in bobbin which i'm actually really excited about um and i have put a link to the machine below uh, for you guys as well if you want to check out anything on the website so as always there's a nice big instruction booklet but it is actually smaller than the other one i wonder if that's because they have integrated a lot of those setup instructions as an infographic rather than writing them out which again i just think that's a lot more accessible so let's pop those to one side 
So here is my lovely bag of feet and equipment to take care of this machine. So again, I'll go through those shortly. Then we have a nice case for the machine. I didn't get a case with my overlocker. I'm not sure if I was meant to, but this is actually quite different to my other machine case. So this is a sort of woven one, whereas my other one is more like a kind of plasticky type thing. Here I've got a little walking foot included, so we'll absolutely have a go with that. This is the bit I hate. I don't know if you guys get this. I hate the feeling of polystyrene on my hands and I hate the noise it makes. Oh, I feel like I need to wear gloves when I handle polystyrene. It's awful. Oh, there's a couple of other bits. So power cable. There we go. And the pedal is, it's a ridged one, but it's got texture more like my Starlet pedal, which is good. So I think this is gonna have to be slid out sideways. So I might do that off camera. So, uh, packaging is off and I've had a little look at it. I've not plugged it in yet because I just wanted to take a look and already I feel really bad because I adore my Starlet, but oh my God, I love this machine already. It's so gorgeous. Now I've not sewn with it yet. So, I mean, I don't think it would be, but it, you know, it might not suit me, but I love it. I, oh my God, it's so gorgeous. Right, so fun things I've noticed so far. Um, an issue I have with my Starlet in terms of threading it, sometimes the thread, like it's hard to maintain the tension and I've always felt it could do with a little extra hook before it goes through and into the channel and sure enough, there it is. So a little hook there before it goes under this hook first. Uh, this section where it loops under stands out more so it's a lot easier to get the thread round. The hook at the top comes up again a lot higher so it's actually properly accessible whereas um, on my Starlet it just doesn't come up quite as high. Um, it's got a needle lift and lower button, it's got your automatic press to sew, you've got your back stitch button there. Um, you can adjust the speed you're sewing at, oh I love it so much. Uh, you've still got your hand wheel at the side which is great. Um, Another thing I love about this, I'm gonna try and move you guys a little bit so you can see more of the machine. You're not gonna see me, you will see the machine. There's a lot more on this side than there is on a normal machine. And I love that because I do find sometimes that I could do with a bit of extra space either side. Um, also, the metal foot plate is the only metal bit. Metal goes right the way along. And again, I do find that easier when you're dealing with a lot of fabric. It's easier to feed it through, it's slidier. Uh, we have a lovely drop-in bobbin here. And I've never owned a machine with a drop-in bobbin, but I did actually want to try and get one with them because I love it. So that's going to be great to use. Um, the standard foot it's got on has got little like clear bits in the middle so you can see what you're doing, which is great. And it's got a little um, tension piece there. And then everything works the same way. Uh, we've got the same automatic threader, except on this, the pedal for the automatic threader is actually like next to and slightly separate and that's such a smoother action. Now, we have our lovely computerised panel over here and all our stitch selections, but my brain immediately went, well, how do I know what all the stitches are? These. So, we have plate one, which shows you kind of all your standard sewing stitches as well as quilting stitches. Going down to the slightly more interesting, this, this machine can do embroidery. There is also a variety of shapes that can be done and it can do letters in the alphabet. So maybe I'll try some embroidery actually with this machine while I've got it. And then as usual, you select everything on here and the bobbin wind is the same. So again, run it across the top round here and in. I'm so impressed like already, this is gonna be so much fun <clears throat> and Oh, yeah, this is like my dream machine. Now, obviously I'll do a proper review once I've sewn with it, but let's turn it on and I can show you a little bit more about how the stitch selection works. <clears throat> and then we will move on to my other big present from Singer, which I get to keep. And I've also got a box of um, fun haberdashery bits as well they've gifted me. So if you guys would like to see a second part two of my Singer collaboration video, unboxing that let me know or I'll do it on Instagram. Here we go let's turn her on for the first time. Lovely so 
that is a nice deep motor noise. Uh, over here, I don't know if you can see that quite well, but our display panel is working. It's showing me the needles up. It's showing me what foot I've got on, actually. I don't know if that's, um, if it changes. I'll have to experiment with that. So we would choose our standard st stitch selections over here. So if I move it to two, which is needle on the left-hand side, it goes straight over. Three, let's try five. And then again, as per, as last time, I can set the widths up on here, which is lovely. So that shows you needle down or up, but I can do it here. So that's our needle down function, needle up. So that ties off the end of a stitch for you, which is quite fun. This is the speed. Now again, it's got nothing on it, so I'll be very, very careful, but speed it up or down my foot is exactly the same place that is fabulous and that makes a really great noise as well it's not you can tell the motor is not having to do anything I mean I know there's no fabric there but still if you run my other machine it does make more of a noise um which is fabulous so our stitch tension is up here and it's got an underline under 345 which is the sort of standard range it expects I'm going to keep it at five but I'll test it with the first fabric I put through here um, and let's see, in terms of programming in stitches, we have a lovely little mode button here. So mode one is the stitches available on the keypad here. Mode two is our first column on this section here. And again, mode three gives us these ones. Mode four puts us onto our second chart and back to the beginning. So. Let's pick mode one, let's go stitch one. We've got a three and a half length, so let's see if it does it like it used to. And then there we go. And we could stitch away quite happily. There's also a nice centimetres and inches, a longer seven inch ruler here on the side. And the markings on the foot plate are the same as before. So they go all the way out to 2.5 centimetres or an inch on each side, which is really good. There's a small bobbin cutter there, which again, when you would thread the bobbin, you put it out. So I'm used to having a tail that has to be picked up and pulled through, but with a drop-in bobbin, you don't have to do that. So I am so excited for this. So item two I was generously given by Singer is a dress form. Uh, they said to me, do you want one? Uh, you know, if you've been after one, and I was like, yes, I've wanted one for years and they make sewing, especially hemming, a lot easier. Now, I don't normally like the adjustable ones, but I'd had my eye on the Singer Deluxe adjustable one for a while, simply because, although it is adjustable, it's quite heavy duty. Um, and this has got the Singer 150 sticker on it, which I will take off. I've named her, she's called Mabel. Mabel the mannequin, out of help me with that one. And she has got a variety of adjustable bits. I can't turn her around properly at the moment, which I think is down to the way I've put her on the sheen, actually there we go. And we can adjust pretty much every measurement. So what I thought would be fun is to adjust her together. So let's get a tape measure. I've got a t-shirt on under this so we can take proper measurements and we're gonna set her up together. So here we are. Um, there are height markings and everything on the bottom. There are centimeter markings all the way down the pole. That's something Adam helped me with. So it's, we're pretty much, she needs to come up a little but we're pretty much the same height, which is ideal, because there's no point. I can put her up and down when I'm working, but for starting off and particularly for figuring out lengths, I'd prefer to have a mannequin the same height as me. So let's do the bust. I haven't done my measurements for a while, actually. Uh, where are we? There we go. So across the fullest part of the bust. And that is comfortably 36. So I've got a dial that's got centimeters and inches so let's put you at 36 which i think is that one, two three four so let's measure that round now because there are markers on every section i'm wondering if i'm going to need to do it for everywhere i think i will so let's do the armpit to 36 as well and see if that does it correctly? It might be that there are lots of little measurements to take. You are on a voyage of discovery with me. That should be obvious if you're about to be in the comments being like, you don't know what you're doing. I don't, it's true. 
because I've never owned an adjustable dress form before. My mum's one was a traditional canvas that was like a size 12. Um, and the great thing about those is I think they're easier to work with. So we're nearly there, we're at 35. Let's do the back. But what I would say is with the canvas ones, if you lose or gain weight, then it's hard. So for example, if you become bigger than your mannequin, you can pad it out. But if you lose weight and become smaller than your mannequin, and then, then and it's canvas one and not adjustable, then it's not as, oh my goodness, not as useful a sewing tool. Um, it is also worth saying that this dress form, one of the reasons I was quite interested in it, is it's adjustable between an eight to a 16. I think they do a larger size bracket one as well. Um, but I thought that was quite cute actually. Um, in terms of longevity of use. Right, that is... Oh, my tape measure's being annoying tonight. That is just under 36, so what is not... Let's try that. You're at 36. Now, I'll be interested to see if, although it's 36 all the way round, if I might need to go up in the bust and down in the back. That's something I'm going to check in a minute. But first of all, let's see if we can get this to roughly my dimensions. Lovely, so that is still a little smaller than it should be, right. There we go, that's now sat at 36, excellent. So, let's do my waist next. Now, I think these must control the waist. There's also a really useful function underneath. If you need to lengthen the torso, you can like pull it apart slightly and then it'll lengthen it. This is obviously as short as the torso can be. So, that is a, well, look at that now, actually. That is a 25 inch torso. Let's check for me. Oh, good yeah 25 fabulous so that's, that's working fine let's do my waist quickly I should need to move my trousers down a little bit to get my true waist Twenty-six and a half. right closer to 27 let's do 27 to start with so again we just Pull it in to there, I think it needs to sit there. There's 27, great. 27, and the one on this side. Lovely, so let's measure that now. really excited to work with something actually that is my dimensions. Now I've just turned all the waist ones to 27 and that's given me 28 which is interesting. I wonder if I'm doing this wrong. Oh well. Um, let's turn the sides down a little bit. Put that to 27 and the back to 27. Let's see how that is. perfect actually that's lovely so that's sat at exactly 27 right let's do my hips so I've done my upper hip I thought this might measure up a hip but it doesn't so let's find out let's get it to a size approaching me and then we can explore a little further I want to use this in my next video for the Davenport which is going to come out on Wednesday because I wanted to do this today because I'm excited about it and also I wanted to use these things in my next few videos so that is over the fullest part of my bum across the way 37. Do you still have a 10 inch difference? It's just uh, an inch bigger in each bit. So 37. Fabulous. And 37. 37. And 37. Lovely. Trying to reach around and read it on that side for some reason. 
Sorry, watching somebody try and keep a measuring tape on a mannequin must be really annoying, so apologies guys. Um, and that is... Oh, I'm writing up at the back, which is why that's not pulling. Fabulous! And that's that 37 as well. Excellent, so we have a 37... Thirty-six inch bust, fabulous. Right, let's do my neck quickly. If you've never measured your neck before, it's worth doing because for necklines and um, dresses, it can be really useful. Okay, it's actually a lot easier to measure than the rest of your body. So I've got a thirteen inch neck. Well, 13 and a half for me, and yay, so does this, fabulous. Now, I'm quite interested to see this, so let's measure from the peak of the bust through to the centre of my back, where my bra strap is. Through to the back, centre. That's 12 inches, let's see if that corresponds. Okay, no, it does not. A little that's quite interesting okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the side of the arm here to a little more see if that's better yeah see that's much more like it that goes from the apex of the bust through to the middle of the back and that's 12 so I think I'm going to have to increase the center because I have a tiny back and bigger boobs. So let's think about that. So let's reduce these sides. This is the nice thing about an adjustable mannequin, actually. Where did I go to on this side? I went to 34. So 34, let's check that. Lovely, 12, perfect. Now let's go side to side at the back basically from one bra wire to the other that straight yeah right 16 there we go. so i can go a tiny bit wider at the back i have quite a broad back actually because of my asthma medication so it kind of makes your ribs expand a bit 16, excellent. Now let's do the bust. There we go. So if I go from bra wire across to bra wire, or like the kind of bra seam as it were, and that needs to be there, that's 20. So we need to go up to a 37, I think, there. Anyone who's watching this who has similar busty issues, this is a really good mannequin choice for you. Just make sure it's got loads of dials and not just three in the middle. Yay, perfect, 20. Fabulous. So let's just check that's still okay on the waist. Lovely, just under 27, which is the same as my waist. Let's try an upper hip, see what that looks like. So on me, that was 31, wasn't it? Oh my goodness, <laughs> I can see I'm going to be tape, like um, pinning this onto here so often. Right. 32 is my upper hip measurement. So I could expand a little. Fabulous, 32. And let's do it a check the same way with hips. So front to front across my hips to my side seams and it's the broadest part of my hip which is there so here we go that is 18 so that just about needs to come in a little at the front fabulous perfectly 18 let's check the back so when we're measuring, make sure we're measuring over the fullest part. 
and make sure that you're starting your tape from the right place, which I just didn't. Twenty-two. Right, let's widen that then at the back. Nope. So what do I put that up to there? Thirty-seven point five. So let's try and get this side to 38 as well. Sorry, I'm just dropping out of shot for a second. Let's check if that whole measurement is correct. Excellent! We now have a 37 on the hips, which has the correct front to back distribution for me. So now, me and Mabel have the same body type, which is fabulous. And I'm really, really looking forward to sewing with her. It's gonna be great. She's gonna live in this corner of the sewing, in the sewing room. I just need to tidy up that corner so that she can live there. So thank you for watching guys. Uh, this machine and good old Mabel are going to feature in a lot of my videos now. Mabel is mine to keep, the machine's on loan. So before I give it back, I will do a full proper review of it. Uh, my other two reviews are now embedded on the Singer website, which is so exciting. And I can't tell you just how excited I am for this partnership because I love Singer machines and they do mean an awful lot to me. Um, because it was my grandma's first machine was a Singer she saw in a window and she saved up for, uh, for like weeks and months to get her first sewing machine. And when I was looking at getting mine, Singer's a name I know, and my mum recommended as well. She went, have you looked on the Singer outlet? And I did, and that's where my journey with Singer sewing machines personally began. Um, and I love them. And I think everyone does have a preferred brand. I know there's people who love Faf, I know there's people who love Brother, and each to their own really. But for me, I like Singer, I like the way they work, and I love how sturdy the machines are. We are gonna have a great time. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be super fun and the weight and power of this machine is inspiring me to actually go for my jeans project because I think now I've got something to fit them on so I don't get really annoyed constantly like you know I can leave my toile on here and come back to it and you know back and forward between versions I think I am gonna have a go and do it uh, it's on my make nine so let's do it why not but the first thing to go on my mannequin will be my Davenport dress and that sew along will be coming out shortly. I was just getting ready to film it when all of this arrived and I got kind of super overexcited and I wanted to use Mabel so I thought I would film this first and tell you guys all my great news. So thank you all for watching this slightly different video to usual. I'm so excited to share my next sew along with you so look out for that coming this week. It's going to be filmed this weekend and I will put it up on Wednesday. And yeah, I, I'm so happy, you guys. It's so exciting. So thank you, as always, for watching. Uh, let me know below in the comments if you've got this machine on pre-order or if you've got any questions about this machine for when I do the review. And yeah, I will see you guys next time for Devonport Sew Along. Thank you for watching.